doing? This is Jeremiah. It's J-Man Monero with J-Man Seminars. We're here with Millenni Who Talks, episode number seven. Beth Lowe, we are changing lives with real stories from real estate rock stars from across the United States. Beth Lowe, how are you today, young lady? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing great. So let's just start off with uh, introductions. We know your name, obviously, but you know where you're from, uh, years in the business, and then we're just going to get started with in the beginning, there was Beth. Okay, so I've been in the business about eight years. I'm from Long Island, New York. I work for Exit Realty Achieve. You want to hear my story? What do you want? Okay, so tell me, uh, years in the business? Eight. Eight years, so that means you started back in 2009-ish, right? End of 2009. End of 2009. So let's start with, with the why. So what made you want to get into real estate? Well, I was at a very difficult crossroads in my life and I needed to make major changes. I had been working in New York City uh, doing product development and marketing for a home uh, products company that probably have their products in your house. And I lost my job back around Labor Day of that year. I was in a miserable, unhealthy marriage to a painkiller addict. I was basically hanging on by a thread every single day. My life was nothing but chaos. Um, he was a mortgage banker. So there was a lot of chaos in the industry, you know, on his end. I don't even think he was working anymore at this point. Um, so it came to the point where I had to start making some major changes. So I left him and unfortunately he also left, you know, the earth, he passed away and I was left with that whole entire mess to clean up of all of our debt. It was about a quarter of a million dollars, his car. I had no place to live. We, I couldn't afford our apartment anymore. I had no job. So it was like the perfect time to either quit, move to Florida, live with my dad, be a bartender, or dig my heels in, do something that I always wanted to do, which was become a real estate agent and basically start my life over from scratch at 31. And that's the option that I decided to do. And Telling people you're going to be a real estate agent in 2009 got a lot of snickers and a lot of laughs. Right. And everyone just thought, you know, all right, she'll try it. And then she'll either get a job or she'll, you know, move down to, you know, live with her dad in Florida. And uh, lo and behold, I was pretty good at it. Um, I got a job with an REO broker. I sold a house on my first open house with him. And it kind of just went from there. I realized along the way that, because I didn't really know anything about the industry, even though I grew up as the daughter of a real estate broker, I was so far removed from it at this point. And I went and I decided I needed to find a new company that was more in fitting with my values and what I wanted to do in terms of customer service and, you know, get referrals from people, not burn them on an REO deal all the time. So I went, I found, you know, a new company that no one had ever heard of because clearly I like a challenge. And uh, I joined Exit Realty Achieve in July of 2008. Um, at this point, I still was living on a friend's couch. Um, I was still in all the debt. I was about to get rid of his car. And I really just went about rebuilding my life step by step, you know, got, got off the couch, got an apartment, got a better apartment. I now manage that whole entire complex that I used to live in. 24 unit building. I'm the exclusive agent for that. And then I ended up going from there to buying my own house, paying off all the debt, building a business from, you know, four houses a year to 27 to this year, I closed 53 for about 18 million in production. Just me. I don't have a team. I just have an unlicensed assistant. So I kind of done a lot in the last eight years. So, <clears throat> Wow, you really progressed right from beginning <laughs> to to present. But let's let's yeah, let's let's back up a little bit. So, starting with, you were in a an unhealthy relationship, right? And I mean, what was that like? Where you you said like it's time for me to move on? You know, I, I had which which happened first? Did you leave the relationship first, and then you got laid off, or I didn't have a job when I left. I borrowed some money from my dad. Wow. So talk about you had a difficult work situation at the time, and then you had to make the difficult decision to to 
leave him, and then he passes away. Yep. Right. So at that point, you, you you're you're homeless, right? I mean, I was living with a friend. Right. Okay. So what was? And in all that, you decided in 2009 when the market is like going down, you said, you know what? Now is a good time for me to get into real estate. I didn't know any better. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't know it was bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, to tell the story. I mean, you, you told me offline a little bit. Like you always wanted to be in real estate. Like I when you were a kid, you used to yeah. tell me that story. I tell me that. my life. I was going to need to rebuild it as a real estate agent. So. Like I mentioned, my dad was a real estate broker. He owned an independent brokerage when I was a kid, close to talk at Harbor Realty. And it was actually right next to my dance studio. So he was pretty smart with his location planning. So like <laughs> after I was done with dancing, I would go next door and I would like take the expired listings and like make my own little MSL binder, MLS binder. And I would play real estate agent. And then I would take my binder home and my friends would come over to play and like most little girls play house. Well, I did also, but first, you know, you had to buy a house from me. I had my own development in my backyard <laughs> and, you know, I would assign you a lot and you would buy the half that, you know, the house from me. And it was just a little cleared patch of dirt, but you know, that was your house. And then, you know, I had a pretty decent sized backyard. So I had like a road that we would ride our bikes on and, you know, we would go from house to house and that's, really one of my biggest memories, you know, growing up was, you know, making my own little housing development and then, you know, selling the lots to my friends. So <clears throat> you, you decided to get into real estate and initially you picked an REO for those who don't know our, what REO means. It's real estate owned. It's a, a for, he was more of a foreclosure listing agent. Is that who it was? Yeah. He only did foreclosures. He didn't really, he only cared that you, you know, would do open houses on his foreclosures and, you know, just sell the foreclosure. He didn't care about any of the other leads that you got. He didn't care about building relationships. But I mean, from doing that, I sold houses to other people who came to the open houses. I met one of my closest friends, Mark, who was also my contractor at one of those open houses. So even though it wasn't exactly what, where I wanted to be and what I wanted to be doing, the experience that I learned was invaluable and the relationships that I made carried through to, you know, the next you know five years of my life. And Mark is still one of my closest friends. So, I mean, I wouldn't have met him. And like you were saying, like they weren't big on service and, and you felt like, you know, you saw yourself, the vision of your, of your business and your real estate career was to provide excellent service to your clients. And is that kind of what prompted you to look elsewhere and kind of make a move? Yes, I had a closing with them and there was mold in the basement that the bank was supposed to remediate and the bank didn't do it. And I was so uncomfortable and I just was so upset with what the broker was telling me to do and say, I just, at that moment, I knew that was, that was it. And I had one other deal in contract because it was during the time where they were doing that $8,000 credit thing for first time home buyers. Oh yeah. Hung in there to that deal closed. I went around talking to other companies and I actually, I found exit on um, this chat group that I was a part of where, you know, people sponsor you in and stuff. And Arthur wanted to meet with me and we kind of met and then I met Susan, my broker and something about this place. It just seemed like it would be a good fit. They were just very supportive. They were very into training. I hadn't been trained. You know, I was just told every weekend, you know, to go put signs out and do an open house. That was really the extent of my real estate training up until that point. So when I came here, it was learning a lot of things, learning technology, learning systems and, you know, having access to all different types of training. So what would you say would be, was that part of your success kind of ramping up every year, doing a little bit more, a little bit more was the training that you received. I mean, the experience you received initially obviously helped you, um, but the training you received at the new broker. Yeah, it was definitely. Which, and, uh, what, what are some of your keys to success? You know, follow up and customer service. You know, I always keep it simple because remember, even when I came here and I started, still didn't have any money. So I couldn't do big marketing things and I couldn't do anything crazy. So I actually started using Facebook before Facebook was a thing to use for marketing, I kind of 
started doing organic Facebook marketing before it was called organic Facebook marketing. And, you know, I would just start telling funny stories because, you know, everybody, everyone loves real estate. Everyone loves to talk about real estate. Everyone thinks our life is so glamorous and right. that, all that fun stuff. Like it is like you see on TV and I would just, you know, go on Facebook every day and tell a story about something that happened that day, something that was funny. And I built this huge following of people. And that really was very instrumental in, you know, my early days. It still is today. I still do a tremendous amount of business off of Facebook. Yeah. I, I see your story sometimes too. It, it, and it's great because it's, <clears throat> it's authentic, right? It's, it's the real deal. It's not what you see on TV that we just have these expensive cars and all we do is sell these, you know, we put a sign up in the house and, you know, negotiate at lunch with each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's, I think that's a big part of it being authentic, right. And, and letting people a little bit of transparency to see people, let people see what we do every day, you know, that, that we are out there working hard for our clients. We care about service, right. Um, <clears throat> what are some of the things, you know, like you said, having no money, because I think there's a lot of agents out there that, that are getting into real estate, they're new agents, you know, they're, they're getting downsized or, the flip side of it is they're graduating college and they can't find work. So they get into real estate and they still have no money and they have, you know, student loans and debt and all the rest of that. So what, what are some of the other low budget or no budget items that you did besides Facebook? Um, I would mail letters, you know, it's your time and the cost of a stamp. I still send handwritten notes to my clients every year on their closing anniversary. And that's been something that, it's scaled now and snowballed. So sometimes where I'm sending out 20, 30 cards in a month, but you know, it's the card, it's the price of a stamp. I would include a $5 Starbucks gift card in them and I'd get thank you cards back from people. Like if I was starting out today, you could send that out to your sphere. You can, I mean, I really consider Facebook my sphere. Like I'm not, I don't have a list of 50 people that, you know, this is my sphere. I really consider everyone on Facebook to be my sphere of people who I'm marketing to. And I think that's, so important. I've sold houses now to people that I went to college with, people that I went to high school with. I, I have a listing coming up from a friend of a, a friend from high school. You know, I'm 40, so high school was quite a long time ago. Um, you know, but keeping in touch with all of these past people, it, it's a good thing. You know, when you learn to use Facebook as a tool instead of you know a time waster or a place to air your dirty laundry, which don't do that. Um, you know, it really becomes a very powerful tool and it becomes a whole free way without even touching on the way Facebook has now where you can do paid advertising. They didn't have that back when I started, but it really, to me, Facebook is like the most invaluable tool. If I ever hear anyone say anything bad about Facebook, I'm like, no, Facebook is like the best thing ever. I don't feel like anything I do on there is a waste of time. Like it's the best thing ever. So... <clears throat> On Facebook, how are you can you said a little bit about telling your stories, but you're not on there going, Hey, just listed, just sold. Um, I just got a sales or like you're not that right. You don't no, do that. I because I, I, I want to I did that more in the beginning, but now I don't really feel like I need to do that. And please, whatever you do, never say I'm I'm sitting here in the office waiting for your referrals. Please don't say that. Please never say that. You know, I think it's important for people to know that you're a real estate agent without you being like, hey, I'm a real estate agent, I'm a real estate agent. I don't think anyone needs you to do that, which is kind of what I was doing with the stories. And, you know, I think it's nice. I don't think you need to post every closing that you have. I don't think anyone cares about that. I think, you know, if you wanna congratulate your clients, that's one thing. If A lot of times I, my clients will do it and tag me and I'm totally fine with that. But I don't feel the need to be like, oh, I had a closing today, I had a closing today, three closings today. like. I don't think after a while people like that. I think they want to just kind of have you be relatable and have you be someone that they want to work with, someone that you know, like, and trust. Um, and from there, you know, I've gone on appointments and people are like, oh, well, I feel like I already know you because, you know, I follow you on Facebook. So what, what do I have to sign? You don't have, oh, you don't have to do a presentation. I, it was, how much do you think? Okay, yeah, that works. Okay, all right, cool, thank you. So the key is that you're building that trust, right? From from that credibility and everything and that you're yeah, doing, they see you're you offline. From, you're already doing it before you even get to the appointment. You're already 
building that credibility. And then it's also a way to stay in touch with past clients. You know, I say I keep in touch with all my past clients and it's mostly through Facebook. Hey, happy birthday. Oh my God, your kids are so big now. Are these the same kids that I met five years ago? Holy crap. You know, they're so grown up. Like, you know, oh, you got a new puppy. Oh, oh, you're thinking about moving. Okay, sure. I'll come over this week. You know, it's just, it becomes just, you become just an extension and a part of their life. Like, that's what I envisioned for my business from the beginning, not standing in a moldy basement, making up excuses about <laughs> why the mold is, is still there. You know, that's not, I realized very early on that that's not who I wanted to be. And I wanted to be the person I like to, you know, I consider myself like the hub of the wheel of the transaction. So, you know, I'm kind of directing everything. And then we have the lawyer and the loan officer and title and everyone kind of going off around it. And I'm in the middle making sure everything's okay. And if it's not, I go all mama bear and get everything back in line. <laughs> I like that. I like that a lot. So <clears throat> you also said though, you do the personal notes, which I think is a, is a huge differentiator because you're not just, you know, a lot of folks think, Oh, you're, you're younger. You're just all technology. And I think it's, Sometimes that that personal touch of a personal note is lost with everybody sending emails and texts and right. doing everything electronic. Like the odds of me opening your email are probably like one in a hundred. But <laughs> send me a, a handwritten note card. I'm opening that and I'm excited about it. And like, because people don't even get good mail anymore. Right. You know? Like everyone gets like bills and half the stuff I recycle before I even get into my house and. You know, but when you get like a, a handwritten note these days, like that's like, it's like crazy. It's like special. It's like, oh my God, I can't believe you remembered. I can't believe you sent me a card. So I'm just going to write this here, handwritten notes so that people can see this. How often do you kind of keep in touch with your clients or is it just kind of ongoing? What's, what's your... Everyone gets a card on their in their closing month anniversary, and then the rest is kind of just ongoing through Facebook or text or however I communicate with them. A lot is through Facebook. Okay. Like if my client comes up in my newsfeed, I'm I'm making a comment on their on their posts. I'm liking their posts, saying how cute their dog is, how pretty their Christmas tree is. You know, always just interacting with them. Well, and it's it's sincere and genuine interaction, right? You're not yeah, you're not I doing mean, it for the purpose of the business. No, it's just I want to stay in touch with sure. them, and that to me is the easiest way to do it. I'm not going to sit in my office and call them because they're like me; they don't even want to talk on the phone. You know, they don't, <laughs> <laughs> you know, when someone's like, "Sit in your office and call your past clients," I'm like, "God, my past clients would be so annoyed if I did that." To them. <laughs> <laughs> they don't want to talk on the phone. You know, we can. We talk over Facebook Messenger or just in a in a post, you know. Like, I think that's I like to treat people how I want to be treated, and I don't need like you know everyone who I do business with to call me on a regular basis because I don't have time for that. I think a lot of people don't have time for that. Right, right, right. And nobody got time for that. So let's say this in the first year in the in business because we like to kind of talk about. The challenges because everybody has struggles in, in their, their first year in business you know what were some of the the most challenging times for you and and what were your secrets to overcoming those challenges um in that first year that first month six months to a year i mean for me the, cha the biggest challenge was not having money to do stuff and you know the way i kind of combated that was you know the company i joined when i joined exit i had somebody i had a mentor who was looking out for me who would say, Hey, do you want to go to that training? Well, okay, I'll pay for it. And then you can pay me back when you have a closing. And my broker would do the same thing. Oh, you want to do that? All right, well, I'll take it out of your next closing. So it was like an investment in myself where it wasn't like, well, if I go to this training, then I can't pay my car. And if I can't pay my car, then I can't work because I need a car to work and I'll take it away if I don't have it, or I won't have gas money. You know, so it's kind of, looking, finding a place where they are, they can help you and support you and get you to where, you know, you need to be, whether, you know, for me now, I probably would have had to join a team if I was joining today, which is fine. I've taken new agents in and kind of get them up and running. And there's lots of people that like to do that. Um, you know, I think it's just, you have to see, even if you have a ton of money, I don't really, 
suggest you go out and spending it all in the, you know your first year in the business because it took me a good 18 months to start making consistent money where you know I didn't have to call my dad and cry and I didn't have to call the car company and tell them could I you know be two weeks late and I would pay you on this day you know it took a good 18 months you know to get there and you know once I got there it was a little bit smoother but you know the beginning I think for a lot of people and I hear it is you know not having the money and not having you know the ability to get yourself from day one with no paycheck to you know your first closing and then beyond because even when I had my first closing it still took me another like two months to get to my second closing and you know it takes a little while in the beginning you know like I said it's not as right. glamorous as it looks on TV I think people should be prepared you know for what they're getting into yeah so I mean it brings up a great point that <clears throat> what you see on TV isn't reality, of course, but that even if you start selling immediately, like in your first, like you said, your first day you sold a house, like we don't see that income for 60 to 90 days, depending on 120 days, depending on how long the closing is and, and what part of the country you're from. So you have to plan accordingly. And I think not spending, even if you have the money, you know, like you're hearing Beth's story right now, like she was able to do all this with not a big budget and there's no reason why you have to i think i still don't have a big but i still don't spend a lot of money <laughs> right well because you don't have to right i mean it's like if you're in business it's like how much money do you make your gross income and then how much money do you spend and then how much money do you take home like i i know a lot of agents that are like oh this is my commission for the year but then here's my budget for everything that i i spent to get that commission and now their net is much less than if they would have just done some of the things that you're talking about. Right. And so I actually do teach a little class called running your business like a business. Where okay. I, talk, I talk about budgeting and we kind of start from the beginning where I'm like, well, what does it cost for you to live per month? And you would be surprised at the amount of people that don't can't even answer that question. So like, if we don't know what it costs you to live, how do we even come up with how much, you know, money you need to make selling real estate because we don't even know, you know, you could tell me your goal is, you know, a hundred thousand dollars for the year. And then it, lo and behold, your bills are 10 grand a month. And guess what? You're negative. <laughs> you know, like we have right. to really start at the beginning. And, you know, that was something that not having any money, you know, really had to teach me how to do. And like, even I was just on the phone before kind of, cause I switched banks and I had to literally change like all my automatic payments. And I took that time to go, you know what, what is this costing me per month? I don't even listen to the sports channels on Sirius. Let me lower that. You know, I saved $200 today just by making a phone call to Sirius. And I think this time of year is a good time to do it. You know, why do we overpay for things? We negotiate for people for a living. I think it's important to also negotiate for yourself. What are you paying on your cell phone bill? If you were a C if you were the CFO of your business, you would be looking for the cheapest, best cell phone plan that gets you the most bang for your buck. You know, I call up Verizon all the time. I'm like down 50 bucks a month from where I started. I'm always asking them. I'm always asking the cable company. This is really high. This is crazy. You know, I just got serious down. I just, you know, you got to negotiate for yourself at all times. And really, the more, you know, let's say you grossed 100,000. You don't want to spend 100,000. You need to really... You need to really be looking at these things and I have Excel sheets and all kinds of stuff where I track this and I track my deals and I track my commission all the time to make sure everything's like lining up where it's supposed to be. And I'm sure if anybody reached out to you, you'd be more than willing to share some of those spreadsheets and some of that information, right? I share them all the time. And um, if anyone's an exit agent, there is a webinar on our exit system that I did a few years ago. If you just search by budget, it should come up. Um, I know I've spoken at YPN and a few other things about this also. Yeah, I know like we've been doing these these interviews and every single person we have on the show, it's like they're they're more than will other why other agents. Forget about just YPN, but other agents in general, all you have to do is ask. And anybody that's been in the business for any amount of time, they're more than willing to give back, answer questions, be a mentor, you know, and, and it kind of goes to our next agenda item is, is getting into leadership. So I know like now you're a board of director for the New York State Association of Realtors, right? You're representing the Long Island Board of Realtors. And then you're also president elect for 
the YPN for Long Island, right? And that's the entire Long Island Board of Realtors, right? So talk talk to us a little bit about like what made you want to get into leadership and and kind of it's more of a volunteer role, you know? Like what what made you get into it? Um, well, I joined YPN. YPN had first started right when I started, so I kind of joined with them. And after a few years, they had asked me to do a top producers panel. And I kind of got to know everyone in the leadership roles and it kind of just became a natural progression for me to go from being on the board. And then Kyle had asked me to be, you know, his vice president to be president elect. And, you know, so this is kind of my entree into, you know, going on to the actual board, which is what we like to use YPN for here. So YPN is like our training ground for leaders for the Long Island Board of Realtors, which is like the third largest board in the country. So we really, we have a big board, but we want all, you know, strong people. So right now me and Kyle see our role as we're trying to bring in people to replace ourselves and also to move up onto the actual, you know, board of directors for the Long Island Board of Realtors. So for those who don't know, <clears throat> Long Island Board of Realtors is roughly what, 27,000 members? Crazy like that. <laughs> yeah, it's 27,000 members okay that's how big the board is and and that's the ypn that they're re representing and i know they've had now melissa gomez who's one of the the other uh interviews that we did she is on this year was appointed yes yeah, right to the and she started YPN. with ypn yeah ypn to now she's on our actual board executive board so we're really proud of her she's our first one I, I would say first of many, right? Yep, first of many. First of many. So in that volunteer position with YPN and then also like at, at NYSTAR on the state level, because you're not just local, you're also, you know, on the state level representing uh, LIBOR. What what do you see the benefits are for those? Because, you know, like YPNers and just new agents, it's like, what's in it for me? Like, why should I? Why should I volunteer? Because I'm not getting a paycheck from this. What? How do I benefit? How does it help my well, career? Answer that question. Because you're a part of what's going on and you know what's going on. And also you get access to people that you would never get gain access to that you can go to. Like you said before, like everybody wants to help. So, I mean, I could call up, you know, the next president right now and ask her a question. She knows who I am because I'm a part of YPN and she's more, she's will help me. And our next, our president elect for the board is in my office, Diane Scalza. And it's just, it's just being around these people and the knowledge that they have that, you know, there's people that look at me and think I have knowledge, you know, that I can give them. And then I'm looking up here at, you know, who can I ask and who can I learn from that's been doing this longer than me? You know, I have been in the business eight years. I've done a tremendous amount of transactions. I don't know everything. And if, if I thought I knew everything, I would be in trouble. So it's always just having the group of people that you can go to. And I think just being involved in general, like when I told my clients that I was up in Albany lobbying on their behalf, like they were like, thank you. Like you care about us. You don't just want a commission check. Cause I don't, I really do care about it. And I like to be involved and to know what's coming down the pike and how we can influence things and change things and make things better for the realtors coming in today. You know, I don't just want to be in this business, you know, for myself. I also want to impact it and make sure that, you know, the next generation of realtors can do things easier and better than we can to help more people. And it's always really about helping the homeowners and, you know, future homeowners of our areas. Oh. What about, you know, like somebody who wants to get involved with leadership? Is there like challenges that you encountered like along the way? Like they said, okay, no, you can't. No, you you don't have enough experience. No, you're too young. Or like what, how, how has that experience been moving up the ladder? I, you know, I'm kind of just there. at the beginning of the journey. So I haven't really encountered that yet. Um, you know, for me, I was really excited okay. that I did get chosen for NYSAR this year and I, I went to two events before I was chosen. You know, I went to two um, NYSAR mm -hmm. events before I said, hey, I want to be a director. So I showed them that I wanted to be involved. Like, if you want to be involved in YPN, 
come to our events. <laughs> you know, that's basically what I did. You know, I started going to the events. They got to know me. They asked me to participate. You know, you can't just be sitting in your office by yourself going, no one wants me to be a director. Well, how do they know you even want to be a director? You know, sometimes you have to volunteer yourself and show them that, hey, look, I'm here on my own dollar. Like I went to Albany and I went to Verona on my own dollar. I went to Chicago on my on my own dollar um, two years ago to the YPN Leadership Conference. I invested in myself. I said that I wanted to be a part of it. And then they people recognized that and said, okay, wow, Beth really cares. Beth really wants to be a part of this, which is an important thing. No one wants to appoint somebody to a position that they don't want because that's not very helpful for anyone. Well, I mean, you bring up a good point, like you modeled the behavior. You said, look, at I want to be involved. And then rather than just say it, you demonstrated it. They saw that, recognized it and said, OK, Beth appointed some kind of position here because she's involved and she's she's really cares and wants to make a difference. And I think that's huge. And we applaud you for that, Beth. You know, thanks for volunteering and helping out. Um, <clears throat> so in closing, we always like to leave on like a positive Matt if, if you were if you're sitting down with Beth just starting in real estate your yourself right or a new agent just getting started in real estate knowing everything you know now in the last eight years of experiences that you've had in transactions and that what kind of advice would you give like what like one nugget could you say like look at this is this is it this don't is it be Beth. To, don't be afraid to ask don't be afraid to ask somebody for help. Find a mentor, find someone in your office. My phone rang three times today with the same person asking me questions. I, it's not bothering me. You're, you're not bothering anyone. I'd rather, and I had people to ask for help and I'd rather someone ask me for help than do it wrong and make a mistake. There's nothing wrong with asking. That's how we learn. So you heard it here from Beth Lowe. Don't be afraid to ask if you need help. You need guidance, ask somebody in your office. It could be a fellow YPN or it could be somebody who's been in the business 40 years. You know, I know uh, when I started, I I asked, I had a mentor who was in the business 40 years. I helped him with technology. He helped me with his experience, you know, what what he knew about real estate because there's no, there's no nothing that can replace experience, you know. So it's it's important to kind of don't ignore it, work with it. And I think too often people, they try to build rivers instead of bridges, right? They're like, you're young and I've been, and it's like, no, we all need to work together to help one another, right? So <clears throat> anything else you want to add? Nope. I hope everyone had a great year in 2017 and have a great year in 2018. All right. So you heard it here first. Beth Lowe, thank you so much for your time. We really, let me just give you a round of applause here. Thank you. Everybody's Thank giving you a virtual round of applause. If you guys could send some hearts here and uh, share this broadcast so that we can get Beth's message out there because her story is going to inspire somebody else who's struggling right now or somebody who's just getting in the business right now. And I, I know it has because people have already told me when I, when I advertised this, they were like, ah. I, I hear I heard Beth's story and it inspires me every day to be a better real estate agent. So just know, even if you don't hear it every day, you're impacting people and you're making a difference in the, in this industry. So thanks for that. All right. Have a good day, everybody. Bye. Bye. And